right, students, we're out here. This is our first lesson in flipping the classroom, so let's hope this goes well. All right, here's what we got. We've got a parking lot full of cars. These cars are all owned by teachers in Chesterfield County. And what we've been is hired by Pearson Honda to try to estimate the average age of cars here that teachers have in Chesterfield County. The reason they want to see is it worth their while to start a new advertising campaign to try to sell cars to teachers. Okay, so how could we estimate the average age of cars here in this parking lot? There's a number of ways that we could do it. The first one could be by doing a census. A census means that we're going to go through and we're going to find every single car that's here. We'll look it up, we'll find its age, and we'll take all those ages and average them together. The problem is there's over 500 cars in this parking lot. It would take us a long time, it would take us a lot of money to look all these cars up, and it wouldn't be really worth our while. Now, our U.S. Constitution does this every 10 years. Again, the problems being it takes a lot of time, a lot of resources, and it's difficult to do. Okay, so if we're not going to do it by doing a census, let's take a sample of cars, and we're going to use that sample to estimate about the population. When we use samples, that's where we get statistics from, the name of the class that you're taking. Okay. So the first thing that you might say is, hey, let's pick a random row and find all the cars in that row. Now here's the problem. Let's say we pick the front row. Maybe all the cars that are in the front row are people that didn't have a lot to do today. Maybe they're people that are like um, stay-at-home moms or stay-at-home dads, something like that. Maybe their spouse makes a lot more money so they have nothing else to do during the day. So if we pick a row, maybe we'll get a row that has more expensive cars than what the, what the rest of the population might be like. So you can see this is starting to introduce a bias into what we might do. So another way that we might be able to do this that's also bad is what we might do is a voluntary response. I could just ask people when they walk through the door, hey, how old is your car? Now a couple things might pop up when we do that. They might lie about their age if they're embarrassed about their car, or the people that might respond might just be the ones that have newer cars and are excited to tell us about that. Okay, so that's a voluntary response. The first type we talked about was a convenience sample, in which we just use convenience to pick our sample. Again, that's also going to be a bad method. Okay, so if those are bad methods, let's start talking about our first good method. Let's use randomness in finding our sample. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple random sample. And it's exactly like the name sound. It's simple and it's random. So what we're going to do here is we're going to find every car in the parking lot and we're going to give them a number. This car would be number 374. Luckily all the spots are already marked for us. This spot would be 375. 376 isn't there so I would just leave that number out. 377, etc. What we then do is we take all these numbers and put them into a hat. Mix this hat up really well and we'll pull out let's say 100 cars. So pull out our 100 cars and then what we'll do is we'll go and find each of our cars and look up the average and look up the age of each of those cars in the parking lot. We'll take those 100, get an average, and now we have a number that we can go and give back to Pearson Honda to try to estimate the age of cars here. All right, the second method that we have is what we call the stratified random sample. Again, we're using randomness in the way that we pick our sample, but what we want to do is we want each of our samples to be more similar to one another. So here's what we're going to do. As cars pull into the parking lot, we're going to break them up by the type of car that they are. We want these groups to be as similar as possible, what we call homogenous groups, because we, all the minivans might have a similar value, and they might be worth more than a two-door coupe or they might be worth more than the moped that you're riding around town on. So what we're going to do is we're going to break each of the types of cars into their own strata. Then what we're going to do is we're going to number all of the minivans and put all those minivans into a hat. And we're going to pull out, let's say, 15 minivans. Okay, so we got that. Then we're going to put all of the mopeds into a hat. And we're going to pull out the five mopeds that are in there. All the two-door cars into a hat. Pull out the ten that are there. And we're going to do this until we get our sample of 100 cars. This being a stratified method will give us less variability in which we'll get to see in class a little bit later. All right, the third method we're going to talk about is using a cluster sample. Now, a cluster sample is used a lot in biology. We will never go through and create clusters. Make sure you get that part down. But what we're going to do is we're going to look for a cluster of things naturally formed much like the parking lot might be if we think of people parking in totally randomness or nothing being here or controlling the time that they come. So we've got the total randomness in the way that cars are parked. 
and we've got a wide variety of cars just in this group as you see. So we think of this as a cluster. Okay, so then what we'd do is we'd find, we'd break the parking lot into a bunch of different clusters, and then what we would do is we'd put all the clusters into a half. So this might be cluster one. We might have cluster two over there, all right? Again, the clusters are heterogeneous, meaning that they have a different type of car all mixed throughout. Okay, so now we've got all of our clusters. We're going to put each cluster into a hat, put all of the cluster numbers into a hat, I mean. So this would be cluster one and cluster two, cluster three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick a couple of clusters out of there. All right, so let's say I pick cluster one. So then I would go and I would find the age of every single car in that cluster. That's the key part with a cluster sample. You find the average age of every car that's in that sample. What's nice about this? It's convenient. I don't have to walk around like a simple random sample before and track all around the parking lot. Now I can just go to my cluster and sample every single car that's in that cluster. Again, this is also used in biology. Think about if you're trying to find the average length of fish in the ocean of a sp certain species of fish. Well, it doesn't make a lot of sense to randomly number all the fish in the ocean and then try to catch those ones. Okay, that's not going to happen. But we could catch an entire school of fish. Think of that as a cluster because you've got some young ones and some old ones. And then find the average length of, car of fish there. So again, this makes it a little bit more easy for us and that we don't have to track all the way around. All right, the last method we have to talk about is a multi-stage. Okay, a multi-stage combines a cluster and a simple random sample. Again, the reasons that they use this, this is for convenience. You could pick, think of a city as in an area of blocks. You randomly select the block that you go to, and then you'd pick the houses that you have from there. So this is a multi-stage, so what I would do is I would pick, break the cars into clusters, and let's say I pick the clusters number two and number seven. Then what I would do is I'd randomly give a number to all the cars in the cluster and pick three or four out of there to, to estimate the age of the cars in this parking lot. Again, it's still random, but this time what we're using is we're using the convenience of just being able to go to a cluster and select some cars that are inside of there.